Hi, my name is John Wainick and I would like to talk to you about cinematic fashion show lighting inside of Unreal Engine. Let's jump right in. Now, one of my favorite free characters that I like to use whenever I'm testing out anything with characters is Phase from the Paragon content that Epic provides for us for free. So you can find this in the marketplace. You can just search for Phase. You can go under their free Epic Games content, find their Paragon stuff. And once you get it, you can add it to your project. Now, you'll notice here that it does say that it only goes up to Unreal Engine 5, but we can still add her to a project that is in 5.1 by going in here, clicking on this show all projects. And then when we come to our project, we'll say that it says asset not compatible, but we can change this to 5.0 and then add her to the project. Then if I were to pop over here into Unreal, we'll see that I've got her added. Here she is. We'll pop in here, characters, heroes, phase, meshes, and we'll find this phase underscore GD open this up by double clicking on it. And here we can see her in here in Unreal Engine 5.1 in all of her glory. To further demonstrate that it really is all about the lighting to achieve that cinematic effect, what you see here is a very simple room that I quickly threw together in Maya in about 20 minutes. So nothing crazy going on here, just some back walls, some side walls. We got a floor and a ceiling that I stole from the basic map and just resized. And then I've got a little catwalk right here. Now, something very important that we want to do right off the bat is we want to make sure that we have auto exposure turned off and how you do that. So you go up here to edit, you come down to project settings and you're just going to type in auto exposure and then you'll see this auto exposure setting. We'll want to uncheck this. Now it's quick, easy thing. You don't have to restart the editor. So if I were to turn this on, you'll see that everything gets brightened up. And if I look out here into the world and then come back in here, the lighting just changes with where we're looking at. We don't want that. We want it to stay the same at all times. So we'll just uncheck that. And it is going to be a little bit darker, but that's OK, because we're not really concerned about about what's going on out here. We want to focus right in here. Now, what we'll do is we want to add phase our character or whatever character you happen to be working with to our scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. We're going to find her and let's go to meshes and I'll just drag her out into the scene. There we go right there. Now, this is not very good for trying to, um, you know, really do some lighting in a dynamic environment here. So we want to pose her and how we're going to do that is we're just going to look through her animations real quick and find one that we like. What we'll do for that, we'll go over here to our characters, heroes, phase. We want animations. And then we see all of these animations through here. You can just double click on one. It'll open up the animation editor. And what we want to do is go down through this list and find what we like. Now, I'm used to working with this particular character, so I'm very familiar with her animations. And I happen to know that this recall animation, if I double click on it, has got some nice little elements of posing in it. So what we're going to do now is with this one selected, I can go up here to the browse button, browse to the asset in the content browser. And now what I'll do is select her in my map. And in the details panel, I want to go to the animation mode. Right now it's set to use animation blueprint. I want to change this to use animation asset. And now I can take this recall animation and just drag it over here onto the anim to play. And there we go. Now we see the very first frame in it. And what we can do from here is we can just slide this initial position until we find the pose that we're looking for. And so for me, I think it's going to be somewhere around here. I think that works pretty well. All right. So how does this work? How does this catwalk stage work? Well, when we're thinking about a fashion show, there are really two zones that we want to be aware of. And the first of those zones is right over here. And we call that the walk. Now, this is going to be where our model in her outfit is going to be walking down the catwalk. And then she'll get up here to the edge to this second zone, which we'll call the shot. Now, I'm calling it the shot because this is where the model stops and poses so that the photographers can snap pictures. Now, usually the model will go through a couple of different poses so they can get different shots. But the important thing to think about these two zones is that 
the walk tends to be a little bit more cinematically dramatic as they're walking through it. But then this zone up here, the shot, is gonna be very well lit so that the photographers can get really good shots. Now, something that you might be used to if you've done any lighting in the past is the idea of the three-point lighting system. And for a fashion show catwalk, that's not really necessarily how it is because usually right up here, they've got their spotlights all coming down, shining on both sides, and then they're gonna have their spotlights here that are shining down as well onto the second zone, the shot, so that we can get some really good lighting on our model. Now, how that works and how we can replicate that here, we're just gonna come in to our quick add button, come down here to lights, and I'm just gonna drag a spotlight in just like that. Now we've got this spotlight right here, just like this. And if I bring this up, probably right around here is where it would be. And we wanna think about how we're going to have multiple spotlights that are going to be lined up through here along this catwalk. So what we need to do is we need to figure out our initial spotlight. So what I'm gonna do is take this guy and I'm gonna drag it right over here to about the middle. And we're gonna have one on each side, but we're just gonna, gonna start with this one right now. So what I will do is rotate this just a little bit so that it's shining down here towards the middle. Now, how this spotlight is going to work, we're probably gonna wanna bring in the cone. So I'm gonna bring in this outer cone angle somewhere around, we'll say 35, just like that. And then this inner cone angle. I'm going to open that up a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and type in something along 18. There we go. And if I escape that and I hit G on my keyboard, we can see how that is hitting right here and hit G again to bring it back. Next, what I want to do is I want to take note of my positioning and my location. So we're looking in the X direction, which is going this way. And the location is negative 170. So what I'll do is hit W to go back to my arrows. I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard to drag a copy of this out. And what I want to do is make sure that it is on 170. So we have a negative 170 and we have a positive 170. So it's on equal sides here. And then we want to make this just positive 80. That didn't work. How about, there we go. We were looking at the wrong axis there. It's actually uh, the 180 that we wanted. All right, so we have these aiming at these same spot here in the middle. Now we wanna make sure that these are all going along the same settings here. So first, we just wanna make sure that we get our cones dialed in, and then we wanna think about our intensity. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pump this up to something like 12, there we go. And before moving on any further, I do wanna make sure that I'm using an appropriate color. So I wanna think about uh, what kind of lights that they would probably be using in here. And just thinking about different spotlights that I've used personally on sets and in photo shoots and in video shoots and product photography and all that. Usually for something like this, we're probably gonna have something that's gonna sit right around a daylight setting. So how we'll do that is we'll come down here to check this use temperature and we're gonna set this to 5600, just like that. And you'll see how it makes it just a little bit warmer warmer through here. And that is something that I like. Uh, so then I'm going to crank up this intensity a little more to about 16. There we go. I like that. With both of these selected, I'm going to hit W again, and I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to drag these guys out. I'm going to drag them right over here, just like that. And then I'm going to do it again and drag them out here, right out front, just like that. So we see this little red X right here. That is because these are all overlapping stationary lights. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that too much because we're using Lumen in Unreal Engine 5 here. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna grab all of these spotlights and then change their mobility to movable, just like that. There we go, now they're fully dynamic. If I hit G on my keyboard, now we can see this catwalk lit up a little bit better. But you'll notice two things that just kind of kill it. And that's we've got this line of shadow right here and we've got a line of shadow right here. What that is coming from is how far apart these spotlights are. And if you look at how the spotlight are set up in along the trussets in an actual fashion show, they usually have a lot more spotlights. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm actually going to reduce the size of this cone angle. So from 35, if we were to bring it down to say 30, and maybe even try 25, there we go, we'll see how 
much bigger that gets. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab just two of these. I'm gonna hold down Alt and I will drag them out like this in between those two. Now, usually you would wanna come in here and set these up lined up very nicely. I'm just gonna eyeball this here. And then I will drag them out again while holding down Alt to get some more spotlights over here. There we go. And we've got a little bit of that shadow ghost lines happening through here. So come back over to my outliner. I'm gonna grab this first one, hold down shift and click on the last one. So I select them all. And I am going to increase the size of my outer cone angle back up to 30. There we go, just like that. Hit G on my keyboard to check it. And now it's a little bit better. All right, and we can see these kind of halos here on the side. We're not gonna worry too much about that. Uh, but this is going to be our walk here. And then we wanna think about our shot zone up here. This is where we'll start looking at our character and how she looks. And you might think, okay, well, I've got my spotlights set up along my truss edge just like this. You know, isn't that perfect? Isn't that what we want? Uh, no, not necessarily. Because even if I were to move these closer to line up a little bit better, we look at her and she just really looks kind of flat. We've got a little bit of soft lighting through here and a little bit of shadowing. But one of the things with these fashion show catwalks is that once they're in this secondary zone, this shot zone, where the photographers are all going to be snapping their shots, they really need to be well lit. Now, it used to be that in some instances they would have darker, uh, more, you know, toned down cinematic lighting. So you would get something soft like this and then would rely on the photographer's flash to bring in some more lighting. But the worry that you have there is now you've got multiple photographers that are trying to take their shot at the same time and their flashes are actually competing with each other. So what's better in this situation is to have it set up where there's enough light that they wouldn't have to have the flashes compete with each other. Now this is CG and we're not really worried about these real world photographers, but we are trying to recreate that feeling of reality. And besides, we are going to want to have a really well lit shot once our model is up here so that we can get some good screenshots, some good videos, stuff like that. So one of the things that happens here is we'll also typically at the end of this truss, we'll have another light right up here, the front, right in the middle. So my X location is now zero. I'm going to rotate this down this way. Now we've got that nice negative 90 going on. And then I'm going to rotate it more in like that and then bring it out further, probably somewhere around here, maybe rotate it in just a little bit more, just like that. And now we have this really well lit model right here. Now, when you think about the three point lighting, what do you have in three point lights? Well, you have your key light, which in this instance is gonna be this guy that we just brought up front. And then you would have your fill light, which oftentimes how this works out is your key light is going to be at a 45 degree and 45 degree. So your key light would normally be right around here. So just as an example, let me drag this off. So usually your key light's gonna be right around here, something like that. And then you would have your fill light would be over here, probably somewhere more like this. There we go, just like that. I'm gonna bring the intensity down. There we go. That's so a little bit softer there. And then you would have a rim light, which is going to be behind like this. So I bring that over there and bring this up a little bit more and bring it in. And then now I'll find those. Let me turn all of these off real fast by unchecking effects world. And now we have this perfect three point light setup with our key light, our fill light, and our rim light. But how does this work in a fashion show setup where you've got all of these lights just like this as well? Well, now it can get very easily blown out. So if I were to toggle those back off, we get that really nice cinematic lighting, toggle those back on. Now it seems just really blown out. So we wanna think about how this would work in the real world. Now if I hit G again to bring these back, first off, you're not gonna have a light back here for a rim light. That's just not how this is gonna be set up on the catwalk. So we're gonna get rid of that. And what we do end up with is all of these other lights in the back here that are along the 
catwalk, these are going to give us our rim light or our hair light. So there we go, just like that. We've got this guy up here that would be shining down here for a key light. And we're not gonna have a light over here like that. So from this, how do we set this up to make it a little bit more cinematic uh, with our shots and feel like what the photographer is going to be capturing? Well, what we can do is come back here through all of these. So let's see, this is spotlight 11, 10, and all the way back would be these other guys. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and move to create new folder. And we'll call this walk light, just like that. There we go. So now we have all those grouped together. And for everything in the walk light folder here, let's dial our intensity back down to something like 12. Maybe try eight. There we go. It's a little bit better. Hit G to check it. Now we've got good lighting through here, uh, but it is a little bit darker than what we get up here right up front, but it's helping it to where it's not completely blowing her out. Uh, we might even consider increasing the cone angle back up to 35 so we get rid of that ghost shadowing through there. And then if we look at this front light here, this is gonna be our key light. We could actually think about increasing the intensity a little bit. Maybe we'll do like an 18. So just a little bit. So we get a little bit more on her there. And what's really good is that we're getting what's called the Reinhardt lighting style, which basically means we've got this much of her face lit up really well. The other side is more in shadow and we've got a little bit of that triangle going on there right under her eye. So that's really good. We are getting some shadow. We're getting some shadow down here and down here. That's working out really well. And then what we wanna think about to fake it is the almost kind of a secondary key light that would mimic what's going to be coming from the flash of the photographer. So what I'll do for that is I'm going to alt drag this down just like that, bring it out and I'll rotate this up just like that, bring it down. And then I'm going to bring it over a little bit, rotate it around like that. And then what I wanna do, what I wanna be careful of is I don't want to cast this shadow down here. So I wanna bring this up some and might even consider, let's change this to local, so I can rotate it this way. It might even consider rotating it up a little bit more. So it's coming right at her, change it back to global. We will do this a little more and we look at her. Okay, starting to get a little bit blown out again and we lose that Reinhardt shape there. So let's, Take this intensity down some, we'll bring that to 12. Maybe bring this guy back down to 16. And at this point, it's really all about shaping the light by thinking about the amount of light that's coming from all directions. So we get something like that. Uh, that's still a little bright. Let's try 12, maybe that up there. And then this one could probably be, we'll say an eight. Starting to get a little too soft there. Maybe we'll do a 10. And then bring this cone in some that and then bring the inner cone in and what we're going to do is we're going to get it really small so we can see where the middle of our spotlight here is because what we want is we want it to be shining on her face and right now we can see when we shrink this down it's not so we want to move this more into position and rotation so that it is right on her face so we'll bring that down, there we go. And now we're starting to capture that Reinhardt lighting back, but we are getting a little bit more light on our face. So this guy, let me bring it back up to 12, maybe even 16, it's gonna be our brighter key light. Uh, let's bring that back down to 14. And then this guy will bring up to 14. So basically what we're trying to do there is we're trying to balance out these two key lights that are working together to light her. So this one up here coming from above and this one right here that's simulating that camera flash. Let's hit G again. We're gonna look at that. There we go. I like that. Really like where that is at. Okay, and then for a fill, we're not gonna worry too much about that because we do have all of these other lights up here. And if we were to bring in a fill light at this point, it's really just going to overexpose the shot a little. It's just gonna be a little too much. So we'll just let the indirect lighting that's coming from these and bouncing around the room and bouncing off the walls, and especially bouncing off the catwalk here. We'll let that act as kind of a pseudo. All right, and then the next thing that I'm going to do now that we have this set up in here is I'm going to actually come in and I'm going to find my directional light that came in with this basic map. And I'm just gonna turn off the effects world. And that way we're not getting 
any of that extra contribution from the outside world there. So there we go. Now we just have inside with our fashion show. And just to show you how much of a difference that makes, let me go ahead and turn this effects world back on. And we can see how that immediately just starts to fill in some of the outside world here. We're getting some blue sky stuff going on and it's bouncing all on the walls. That's actually coming from the skylight because the skylight currently is set to capture, real time capture the scene. So it's capturing the sky out here and the clouds and everything. And bringing that in there and we just don't want that if i were to turn this off you'll see how it takes away that blue in the shadows but the directional light when we turn that off it takes away what's left because now we're not getting any indirect light at all from that directional light but we are going to take advantage of the skylight but we're not going to do it in a way where it's actually capturing the outside sky instead what we want is we want to use an hdri map so how we're going to do that in our skylight, let's turn it back on. What we'll do is we'll turn off real-time capture. We're gonna change our source type to specified cube map. And now what we need is an actual cube map to use in here, an HDRI image. Luckily, the Paragon characters come with some. So let's grab this uh, daylight ambient cube map. There we go, something like that. And then this source map cube angle is gonna let me rotate this around capture our reflections in a little bit of a different way. Uh, we can try some others in here. Let's try this uh, epic quad panorama. It's gonna give us just a little bit of a different HDRI effect in there. And I think that's, that's gonna work for me. So just to double check this, let me turn off my walk light folder. There we go. And now we're getting just our key lighting along with our skylight here. And if we were to actually turn both of these off, you can see what the skylight is doing. Now it is casting shadow from my walls here and I do have a big open space here. The reason I have this open space in my model is so that it can bring some of that skylight in. So right now this is just being lit by that skylight. So if I start to rotate this around a little bit more now, you can see how that actually affects it. So let's get something maybe right there. There we go. I'm gonna come back over and turn both of these spotlights back on. There we go. She's nice and fully lit. Turn on my walk lights. And at this point, just to get more of a cinematic effect, I'm going to select all the spotlights in this walk light folder. And we're gonna take the intensity down to six maybe even four. And there we go. So now we have this walk area of the catwalk. It is all lit up, but it is darkened enough so that it's not casting as intensive indirect light on everything else. And now our two key lights that we've set up here are going to work out really well for getting our model lit. And now we'll just come over here. We'll set this up just to test this out. Let me come in here to my quick add. Going to go to cinematic, grab a Cine camera actor. Going to bring this up and where are we at? Let's aim this at her. There we go, just like that. So now I'm going to bring this down some. Let's turn off our snapping, make this a little bit easier to work with. I'm gonna change this to local space, bring that up a little bit. And then we're going to move this back, rotate it around, not that direction. We're going to rotate it around this direction a little bit more. There we go. And then what we want to do is we want to come over here into the camera settings. We're going to go to focus settings and we want to change the focus method from manual to tracking. And then from here, I'm going to expand this tracking focus, click on the eyedropper, and then we can come over here and we can click on her. And then we can come over here and change this draw debug tracking so that we can see where that is right there. Okay, that works. All right, let's do a focus plane. There we go. And that'll, that'll work right there. Maybe we'll go ahead and set this to manual for this case. And then I'm going to select her again, try that again. There we go. And then that way I can sneak it back just a little so that that focus is right on her face. There we go. We'll stop drawing our debug focus plane. We're gonna come down here to our aperture. I'm just gonna drop this down to 1.2 so we get some nice depth of field in the back and get some separation going on. And there we go. Now we have a camera set up here. And from here, what I'll do is go up to window, I'm gonna come down to viewports, viewport two. I'm gonna click on perspective, 
come down and change it to a cinematic viewport and then click on it again. And I wanna click on this Cine Camera Actor 1 like that. And now we can see our character here all set up with the lighting on and we can place different cameras around to simulate the different photographers that are going to be taking pictures as well as we can set her up with different poses from different freeze frames and her animations. And then we can come in here to our hamburger menu, come down to high resolution screenshot, and then we'll just hit capture. It's gonna open up my screenshot folder and we open that up and now we've got our character lit here. So what can you do from this point? From this point on, you have everything set up with your lighting so that your catwalk is well lit for the walk and then your photography shot zone at the front of the catwalk is well lit so that any of your models are up here, up front, really well lit and ready for you to bring in your cameras and take the snapshots, having them in whatever pose or animation you wanna have them in. And then you can go through and you can start filling out the rest of your environment with things like chairs, uh, any kind of extra neon lights, all of that. The main thing that you're going to want to remember at this point is that you just want to make sure that you keep your primary lighting setup over here.